Welcome back to Smart Life. We continue our discussion of things we are told we should probably never talk about. Religion is our topic, and I'm not afraid, and I know you're not either. And some Americans, a small minority actually, have decided in recent years that they're offended by any display of religion. And the courts have recently discovered a freedom from religion in the U.S. Constitution. Many of us can't find it, but they seem to think it's there. Small groups around the country are using the courts to tear down any display of religion on government property. And one notable case of that is, of course, the Mount Soledad Cross here in San Diego. It was recently ordered by a court to be taken down, and my next guest is involved in that fight. He's a true warrior fighting on the front lines in the battle to preserve religious freedom. Charles Lamandry is the founder of the Freedom of Conscious Defense Fund. Do I have that right? You do. All right. Welcome to the show. It's really good to have you on. I am a great admirer of your work. And uh, first of all, catch us up to date on the whole situation of Mount Soledad. And then I want you to go into kind of what this means to our republic in general. Sure. Happy to do that, Dr. Gina. And thanks again for having me sure. on your show. The Mount Soledad Cross case is actually the longest-running religious liberty case of its kind in the history of the United States, and wow. here it is in our own backyard in San Diego. I've been actively involved in the case as a lead proponent to protect the memorial and to keep it intact since mm -hmm. 2004. It's gone up and down the state and federal courts, and most recently uh, what we did was through a federal initiative was to transfer the land to the federal government and get it out from under the state constitution, which is actually more restrictive of religious symbols and public property in California. So now it's under the federal constitution. Okay. No sooner uh, did we do that in 2006 and the ACLU sued saying, well, still unconstitutional under the federal constitution. Uh, the trial judge, Larry Burns, ruled that it's not unconstitutional, went to the Ninth Circuit, the most liberal, most reverse court, as you know, in the United Infamous. States. Yes, they found it unconstitutional went to the Supreme Court and they said, uh, you know, uh, this is an important case, but we need to have a final judgment. And although the Ninth Circuit found it unconstitutional, it didn't really say what to do with it, so they sent it back to Judge Burns. And the decision we have from him uh, just a couple of months ago was that, you know, I still think it's constitutional, but based on the finding of the Ninth Circuit, I feel I have no choice but to order it uh, down. But he stayed that decision so that it can go back to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court invited us to come back when we have a final judgment. We believe we have the votes, Dr. Gina, at the U.S. Supreme Court to have the Mount Soledad Cross found constitutional. And in as much as they, again, invited us to come back, uh, we think there's a high likelihood they'll take the case. In the next year or two, we should finally have a resolution and a favorable one that will hopefully get the law back on track, not just for Mount Soledad Cross and other memorial crosses, but other Ten Commandment displays nativity scenes, mm -hmm. any type of religious display on public property, because the law badly needs to be clarified in that area. Hmm. I have so many questions surrounding sure. this, and whenever I watch people interview you, and I've watched many, I, they don't ask my questions, so I'm hoping to get a lot of these in. Okay. One is, uh, if, they, if they are successful, if this small minority of people who really right. are behind this are successful, and ultimately the Mount Soledad Cross has to come down, which as the news reported it, you would have thought already happened, yeah, by right. the way. Um, what happens to the crosses, for example, on the in the public cemeteries? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, all over, we can see them at Point Loma That's in all right. of our national cemeteries. Right. What happens to those? You know, they're all at risk. Uh, the other side, of course, is, oh, no, no, we're not talking about those. But they always say that. They they're not going to be that. satisfied yeah. until they eradicate any symbol of religion from the public square. Mm -hmm. They want God out of sight and out of mind. They don't want any religious influence. They want their own secular religion to reign Because that is a religion. Land. Let's not Absolutely. forget that. No yeah. question about it. Like you said in the last segment, it's not a matter of the religious right imposing their morals. Uh, the law is always based on someone's set of values or standards exactly. or morals. So is it going to be basically a set of morals that has no religious integrity built into it, or is it going to be the set of morals and standards that made us a great nation? That's it. That, and that really is the ultimate question, and, and you've yes, pinpointed right. it so well. Now, as far as this whole court thing, and I am certainly not an attorney, so this is why sure. I really want to understand, is it very well precedented for the federal court to pay so much attention to what a lower court said, or is this sort of a new trend that we should be mindful of? You know, the problem is, again, with regard to these Establishment Clause cases, the law is mm -hmm. so muddled, depending upon the political predisposition of the judge, they mm -hmm. can pretty much do whatever they want. In the case of Judge Larry Burns, you know, he basically said the Ninth Circuit are my bosses. They've made it clear 
uh, what they want done. So he felt bound by their decision. So the lower court district judges on the federal level are generally bound by the federal circuit appellate courts. But of course, they're bound by the U.S. Supreme Court. Again, on this case, we need five votes to pre prevail out of the nine on the Supreme Court. And if you count heads on how the Supreme Court justices have ruled in other cases and statements they've made, including in this case, mm -hmm. we feel very confident that we have a high, high margin of success rate. It, that's exciting. And, and so we, if we do prevail at that point um, and the Mount Soledad cross gets to stand, what does that mean for freedom of religion in this country? And give us the contrast to that, if you would, too. Sure. This particular case deals with that uh, part of the First Amendment of the Constitution we call the Establishment Clause. Mm -hmm. Is acknowledging God or giving uh, some type of uh, free expression of, of religion in this case a violation of the U.S. Constitution because it constitutes establishment of religion? That's a question that needs to be answered. And from the point of view of the Founding Fathers, it's kind of a ridiculous way to approach it. Uh, for them, they came here, as you know, religious uh, refugees. They didn't want to be under some type of national uh, religion. And the Founding Fathers made it clear that what they did not want the establishment of a national religion like they had in England. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, they even said it's okay for the states to impose a state religion, uh, which we don't have now and no one's advocating. But from the Founders' point of view, it was only the federal government that they didn't want establishing uh, a religion. So we need to get that clarified. And, and really, it should come down to so long as people are not being forced to worship in a certain way or worship at all, there should be no prohibition of religious expression in the public square. People should be able to bring the multiplicity of ideas. You know, in San Diego, we have a Shinto Bell in Shelter Island. We have a J Japanese Rose Garden in Balboa Park. We have a uh, antiquated uh, Jewish uh, synagogue in Heritage Park in mm -hmm. Old Town. Uh, they put up Ramadan banners during Ramadan. Nobody has a problem with those, and it's our position nobody should. Why are they going after yeah. you know, this Mount Soledad Cross, which is built by veterans to honor veterans in what was the birthplace of the California missions? So uh, it's part of our culture, it's part of our history, it's part of our heritage, uh, and there's no reason to try to eradicate uh, that portion of it. So it's very important to get a clear understanding of the Establishment Clause, and we're hoping this case provides that so that the 2%, really the atheists, you know, the, the agnostics don't care too much one way or the other, and 75 percent of the people self-identifies as Christian, uh, they certainly are not in favor of this. And we got 76 percent of the vote of the people of San Diego in 2006 in favor of maintaining the memorial. So it really is a very small percentage of people that are trying to change the culture to their very narrow way and we believe uh, erroneous way of thinking about these issues. I'll tell you, you think back and you think about, uh, you know, one nation under God, indivisible. You Absolutely. think about endowed by our creator. Absolutely. Uh, you, you look back and you think, this is just, this is almost silly. I thank you so much for your fight. And I want you to know that you have not just my support, but my prayers. And uh, I know that our listening audience feels exactly the same way. Thank you for You're being welcome, Dr. with Gina. us. Thanks That's for Charles Lemandry. Give us your website one more time. Sure, www.consciencedefense.org. Conscience, C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E. Defense.org. Awesome. Thank you for being with us. You're and uh, up next, we're going to talk about this. Do we have the right to discuss our display of our religious beliefs in the workplace? Now, this is a whole different thing. My next guest says it depends. Then we're going to go to your calls. The number 888-650-8176. You know it. 888-650-8176. Or, of course, you can go to moneybizlife.com. Click on the Smart Life page and find us there. We'll be back in a moment with more. Stay with us. You're listening to Smart Life.